You're watching IPBC Asia 2014 coming to you from Shanghai. And obviously during the conference, there's a lot of focus on intellectual property in China. But of course, Asia also incorporates many other countries, including India. And now Infosys is a company that's been in the news recently, announcing a $100 million fund targeting startups and intellectual property. The new chief executive, uh, Vishal Sikha, former SAP board member, is keen for the company to continue to learn and obviously intellectual property is a major part of that. Now we're speaking with Dr. Anindya Serka, who's the Associate Vice President and the head of the IP cell at Infosys. Thank you so much for making the time to talk to us today. Thanks, it's a pleasure joining you. So give us a snapshot firstly of uh, the state of IP in India and where Infosys fits into that. So India has gone a major shift, a major change in the both IP management, both in the value side and the de-risking side. Uh, when the first law changed around 2005, because of TRIPS, we got our framework, the IP Acts changed. And more than that, it is not the act or the statute. It is the initiative of the organization, the company. You first need to create IP. Okay, then it's a choice. Do you want to protect it? And subsequently, do you want to make money out of it? So then it forms into a plan, a kind of strategy, which gradually moves into that. Yeah, the same thing is with Infosys. Infosys had a presence in the IP, uh, not too strong in the past. I would say the last four, four and a half years, we have uh, been really serious about it. And if you look at the curve, you know, the, our filings have really increased in the last four and five years. And we have... Uh, developed some strategic plans of how to capture the IP which has been created and then later with possible chances of monetization and commercialization. Mm -hmm. When you took on this job though, what was the vision that your now employer asked you to pursue? Or what is the vision that you are bringing to this role? Where do you see it in five years from now? Well, when I took it over, they were primarily, uh, the thought process was on two different prongs. Firstly, I would say it's value building. That's creating IP. We don't want. To, we want to create IP which can be commercialized and which can be give us a competitive edge in the market. The other prong was the eliminating risk. So the vision comes in as you know maximizing value and minimizing risk. So we don't want to be sued by others. I guess nobody wants. And so what, do, what are the steps you take, what are the processes you build in, which you know, mitigates or minimize that? These were the two strategies which uh, we had built up in the last four years. They were in a very nascent stage earlier because uh, of the nature of the business of the company, uh, it was not uh, looked upon as a great requirement. What does Vishal Sikha want you to do with this part of the business, though? Because ultimately, for him, in terms of growing Infosys, he's obviously looking for a return on that $100 million he's invested. Uh, the $100 million is, again, uh, it's a different story. It's, it's a money which is being to be invested with startups, okay, who has no shy IP. According to Vishal, uh, he's, uh, the company is looking forward in areas uh, of technology of not yesterday, tomorrow's technology. So there will be a there is a process to segregate and select uh, the specific startups in which uh, Infosys want to invest. That process is on now. Right now. Um, and what's the other thing you said? Well, I suppose the the question is how to generate that return. Okay, there it looks uh, on the area of investment is very investment of technology okay. then comes investment of time money and when I say there are areas which are promising okay we are all looking forward for uh, tomorrow's technology of including a lot of design thinking and artificial intelligence AI is one of our areas and then there are a um, couple of platforms where um, there's been a constant focus we have built in internal innovation programs, which is something which it trickles down from top 
it's not a bottom of approach and which we are looking at how to do things differently so that you can get more meaningful IP generated. So we are um, um, adopting some of the cor uh, courses or training program which have been uh, very popular in Stanford University and uh, they have been largely been used and implemented inside. And it's a, it's a top-down approach which always works better. You also lecture on the subject uh, in India and elsewhere. What do you see in the next generation of uh, Indian entrepreneurs, Indian professionals, in terms of their understanding of IP and how that will flow through to both uh -huh. Infosys and the country? That has gone a large shift. That has gone a large shift. You know, again, the way I would say is, I mean, 20 years ago, if I had to explain to somebody in India what I do, it's a tough challenge. The IPR would have meant interpersonal relationship. <laughs> Today, that problem is not there. We have had more, more of this awareness programs in the last two years than all of the kind of conference in the last decade put together. There are specialized courses now in India. There are specialized programs, small training programs for working executives who are involved in this. And the best part is that in, in India today, IP is looked upon as a profession. People want to become IP professionals. They want to become IP professionals. So that's a drastic change. Still compared to some of the people you've spoken uh, to here at, at the conference, what sort of next leap do they still need to make in India? Where are the, the gaps, where are the deficiencies that still need to be closed? I won't say there are really gaps. It's a learning process. The, the learning process, people who start learning early, finish learning early. People who start learning a little late, they take a little time to be at par with others. Now, Indian, Indian organization or Infosys as such, we would have the same challenges any other multinational faces. We have a large presence of our IP in several countries. In the last four years, we would have got more than 200 granted patents in the U.S. From the size of the company, that's quite an appreciable number. Hmm. So, I don't think there is much to, on a broad policy level, that you need to move or improve. Yeah, there will be ad hoc cases you don't know. There may be litigation coming up, how to handle it. Finally then, what do you think the rest of Asia can learn from developments in IP in India? Start early, follow the rules, put in a uh, rigid framework. See, IP is not rigid, it has to be a dynamic strategy. Your business is not rigid. Your sales are not changing, your market is changing, your customers are changing, their wishes, their likes and dislikes are changing. So IP also has to change, your strategy has to change. It's a dynamic strategy. The other thing which I would like to say is, uh, you know, have two diverse prongs. One, focusing on increasing the value of your IP. And the other is uh, decreasing the risk. That's what we have followed in emphasis, and uh, we are reasonably successful using these. Thank you very much for coming to talk to us about it today. Thank you, it's been a pleasure. Dr. Anindya Serka from Infosys joining us here in Shanghai for IPBC Asia 2014.